welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor. I'm the last in linen and today I'm going to be sharing with you 15 free, over 15 free patterns that I have on my to make list this year. Um, I think this might be a tiny bit ambitious considering that I am having a baby in a few months, but you know, we have to do what we have to do. <laughs> and I got a little overexcited easily, easily could say that. So I thought I would share those patterns with you because you might find them interesting. But just before we get into it, I do want to apologize for the lighting. I am making do with what I have, but it is January in Scotland and it is pitch black outside. It looks like it's the middle of the night and it's the middle of the afternoon. So uh, we're just gonna make do with what we've got. I've tried to make it as cozy as possible. Uh, but without further ado, let's just jump right on into the patterns. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing a variety of different types of patterns. I've got knitting patterns, crochet patterns, sewing patterns. So hopefully there is something for everybody and for everybody's mood, because I know a lot of us have a lot of different hobbies like myself. And I've also tried to pick a range of difficulty. Um, I don't, even just for myself, I don't know what mood I'm gonna be in and I don't know how complicated I'm gonna want things as the year goes on. I'm someone who really likes a pattern that demands my attention, but I also like to craft while I'm watching TV. And generally I'm not paying that much attention if I'm crafting while I'm watching TV. So we're just gonna head right on in. The first pattern I'm gonna show you guys is this beautiful tote bag. This is a crochet pattern by Hey Hey Crochet. I really love gingham. Just in general, I like to work with gingham. I especially like to sew with gingham because the lines make it super easy. And I've never tried to make a gingham or knit, like a knit or a crochet gingham pattern before, but I have a ton of projects saved that are gingham, but made from knit or crochet. So this is one of the first ones I'm gonna try. This is a free pattern from Hey Hey Crochet. And just before I go on, I do want to mention, cause I am the queen of forgetting things right now, that everything I mention will be linked down below if you want to have a look at anything. I think this bag is so cute. Other than being super useful, which of course it is, cause I don't think we can have enough tote bags. I love how springy this is. I am definitely getting in the spring mood. If you're a gardener like myself, January is when you tend to let your imagination run wild. <laughs> it's the perfect planning month and that gets me ready for spring because I'm thinking about bulbs and seeds and that just makes me want to make spring and summer type patterns. I'd also like some springy things to use when the baby gets here because he is due in spring and uh, I will not be working on much, at least initially, I'm sure. Um, so this is one of the first patterns I'm gonna make. This is crochet. It looks so cute. I also love how I can make it my own. I actually really like the green and kind of a white or a cream version that she has here. And I think I might try and make something like this at first, but if I really enjoy the pattern, there is nothing stopping me from making them in other colors and maybe giving them to family members as well. Um, my mom is a big girly girl. She loves pink, so I might make her a pink one. I know that my mother-in-law loves greens, so I might make her a green one as well. I just think it's really versatile and easily adaptable. So I'm looking forward to making this bag. The next pattern is actually a sewing pattern and this is I think a good year rounder. This is called the Savannah Shacket. This pattern is free on Mood Fabrics website which I believe is a North American company although don't quote me on that. Once again one of my favorite things and one of the best things about being crafty and making your own clothes and accessories and homeware is that you can make it your own. So I love the pink plaid that they've used, but I think I might make mine in a more fall color or maybe even a solid, just a solid colored jacket. Living in such a cold and 
Uh, let's say weather diverse climate means that layering options are always a must and this would be such a nice layering piece. So this is top of my sewing list, at least part of it. Next pattern is this summer dress. Now this I'm going to be making, I had to put my tea down to talk about it. I'm going to be making this or I'm hoping to make this quite soon. This is a DIY tiered dress. Tiered dresses are notoriously easy to sew um, if you're a beginner sewer and you want to start making your own garments but you're not really sure where to start. I really recommend a tiered dress. I've never personally made one but I've watched tons of people make them and I have made other pieces of clothing that have a lot more instructions than this but the reason I'm hoping to make this soon is because this is going to be the type of dress that I am craving right now. It is a dress that is going to fit over the bump but is also not a maternity dress so I can wear it post pregnancy. That's really important to me. I have tried to cut down the amount of maternity clothes I've bought. One because maternity clothes like anything baby is <laughs> or baby related or even like wedding related is very expensive. Um, and a lot of the time you can find alternatives in bigger sizes. So a dress like this, which is already so flowy, so oversized, really forgiving, and also has the tie straps. So I'm hoping that might be helpful in nursing. We'll see. Is just the perfect transition piece. And like I said, I am due in spring. Um, living in Scotland, we don't know what kind of spring we're gonna get, but if it does get warm, then this will be perfect. And if it stays cold, I can just layer it with leggings, sweaters, long sleeve t-shirts. There's no problem there. It's an easy throw on, throw off. You have to love a versatile oversized dress. The next two patterns I'm gonna to put together because they are the same item, just a different style. And that is underwear. I have never tried to sew my own underwear, but I've always been really interested in it foundation, any kind of foundation wear is really important. This is probably something I will leave until after I give birth and I've recovered a little bit just because of the way the lines hit and the elastics hit and the way clothes kind of look. Maternity specific underwear I think you should splurge on if you're pregnant if that's something you want to do but this is a pattern or these two patterns are things that I'm looking forward to later in the year. I really want to try and make my own underwear. It just feels like something that is a quick and easy job to do. And I think we talk a lot about climate change in relation to fast fashion and just fashion in general, but that often excludes underwear and foundation wear. And so I would really like to try making my own and seeing if I can find a fit that suits me. The nice thing too is that, like with all sewing projects, or really any make your own garment projects, it's something that you can fit specifically to your body. And I think there is nothing more crucial to underwear than to making sure it fits your body. <laughs> I have the, I'm just getting the name, the Peachy Undies pattern which is more of like a high-waisted kind of Baywatch, maybe 80s look. And then I've got the more kind of basic Stevie Knickers PDF pattern. As with every pattern in this video, they're both free. Um, and I think they're going to be really easy to make, hopefully. If not, then I will learn a whole bunch of new skills either way. So, okay, so I have tried really hard not to make this video totally baby-centric, even though that is kind of my focus for the next few months is making baby clothes and baby accessories and oh, I don't know I guess baby keepsakes right because there I know that a lot of these things like he's not gonna know and he's probably not gonna care that much um, but they're things that I'll be able to look back on after he stops using them or things that we'll be able to use as, as parents and I'll be able to know that I made them for my son and that's a very special thing and the first item I'm going to show you of that list is the Teramisu Baby Blanket designed by Alicia Paulson. I am getting this particular pattern off Ravelry, so that is the link I will link down below. If you are a maker and you don't have a Ravelry account, I highly suggest it. It is mainly crochet, if not definitely only crochet and knitting, but the amount of patterns available that are 
a variety of budgets, some of them completely free like this one. It's just amazing and it's it's nice to have everything all in one place. Ravelry is like the Facebook for makers. It's specifically for, and Facebook is not really an analogy I love to make because it's better than that and it's a lot less toxic. Um, but Ravelry just has everything. Um, so yeah, that aside, because I'm digressing as I usually do, this baby blanket stole my heart. Granted, this is not massively practical. <laughs> Um, this is not going to be one of the more practical things or something that we're going to be swaddling him in, but it would be a lovely accessory for the nursery. And uh, I think I said this in my last video, but we're kind of decorating the nursery how we want it because he's not going to care for a really long time. <laughs> we don't know where we're going to be by the time he's old enough to actually care what his room looks like. We don't know if we'll still be in this house or somewhere else. So uh, we're just enjoying the ride. I think I'm probably based off of the colors we've chosen for the nursery. We don't have like a strict theme, but based off of the things that we like, I'll either stick with the chocolate brown ribbon or I might do a navy blue one. Um, either way, I just, oh, I saw this blanket and I just couldn't stop myself. It grabbed my heart. I think a lot of people have made this next knitting pattern. It's a very quick, knit up accessory. This is the Miss Marple scarf. Um, if you don't know, I am a huge Agatha Christie fan. <laughs> so anything that has like an Agatha Christie related title or name or is named after one of her characters, I'm probably going to make it. I've seen this all over Instagram for years. I started knitting about three or four years ago, very slowly. Um, and crochet I've done on and off since I was wee, but I have had this scarf on my list for ages and I did want to include a number of patterns that were quite small and quick to knit up that weren't just baby clothes. This is obviously going to be for myself, but is another one that I could make for other people in my life if they would like. It's an easy, quick scarf. I just, I think it's just all in one go and this is top of my list. I have the Ravelry link down below, but I think if you Google it, you can find it in a bunch of different places, if I'm not mistaken. So definitely have a look at this one if you want like a nice quick knit up, especially looking forward. I know that we're still in winter and we're all looking forward to spring, but looking forward to kind of next autumn and winter, this would be a nice project to get done this spring or summer so that it's just there waiting for you when the weather gets chilly again. I'm looking forward to spring, but I do, I am an autumn girl at heart, so I needed to include something. Okay, the next pattern could very well be the reason I got into knitting in the first place. This is the Outlander Carolina shawl. I have it here designed by Louise. Bolanos, but I have seen it designed by other people as well. I've also, there's an Outlander knitting book that has this shawl or something very similar in the book. So some version of this is what I'm including. The one here actually was free. It is now for money, but I think there is a free version out there. So keep a lookout. I don't know what it is. It, about this shawl, like what kind of hold this shawl has on me. I'm not, I don't, I'm not much of a shawl person. I don't own many shawls. I certainly don't wear many, but there is just, uh, I am such a big fan of Outlander, which is so cringy living in Scotland. Like I try not to mention that to too many people that are actually Scottish, but I'm such a big fan. I love it so much. It's something that um, my family and I used to watch together and I just love it. So this is a big project for me in terms of like getting it off the to-do list and being able to wear it and enjoy it just because it is something that's been on my mind for years. The next pattern is another baby pattern because I couldn't help myself when I saw these. These, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best at the name. Um, but I apologize <laughs> for anybody who uh, actually knows how to pronounce these. I believe they're called the Rips Bear or the Rips Bar bloomers. These are so cute. A lot of bloomers that I've seen because I have wanted to knit up bloomers for my baby for a while. 
a lot of them are quite frilly and of course I could make those that's not a big deal he's not gonna know and he's not gonna care but I did want something that was a little bit more gender neutral and I think these are a really really great pattern for that once again I will say this till the cows come home baby knits are some of the most satisfying knits because you get a full garment in at least half the time it takes to make a garment for an adult if not less time it's just a beautiful thing I don't believe that these will take very long at all to knit up and so I'm looking forward to that but I'm also just looking forward to seeing him in them okay the next pattern is so great you guys know how much I've been enjoying knitting socks over the last year I finally dipped my toe <laughs> unexpected pun. I finally dipped my toes into knitting socks and I've been completely addicted. I love knitting socks. I'm so happy that I just found something that naturally just I seem to gravitate towards. Be it that I believe this year is going to be all about comfort. This pattern is perfect. These are the slipper socks by Zines and Roger. I believe that's how you pronounce it. These look so cozy. In fact, I might put these higher up the list. I didn't see. Oh my gosh, they're crochet. <gasps> I thought they were knit. They're crochet. That's so cool. That has actually just blown my mind. <laughs> I 100% thought they were knit socks. But they're crochet socks. That's so cool. As I was saying, I think I might have to put these higher up my list because I think these would be great for the hospital. I I'm going to be in the hospital for a few days because I'm a high risk pregnancy and also my baby has to get some tests done because I'm a high risk pregnancy. So I'm going to probably be in the hospital for about two to three days. So comfort is top of the list when I'm in the hospital and these... I think these are going to have to come with me. I had no idea they were crochet socks. That is very exciting to me. Okay, so the next one um, is also exciting. I think because I'm going to start making this like within the next few days, hopefully. And that is the Picnic Moo Moo by Rudy Judy. There is no pattern for this, sort of. It is it is free. <laughs> so Rudy Jude, which is an Instagram account, I will include a picture and obviously it will leave linked down below but Rudy Jude is an Instagram account for a woman who owns a company of I believe it's patterns there might also be fabrics patterns are absolutely beautiful she posted this picture on Instagram of this particular dress and people went nuts but she didn't make a pattern of it it wasn't based off a pattern she just kind of went with it which I think is great so she instead made an IGTV video of how she made the dress and I'm going to be trying to follow that and make that um, like I said really really soon so hopefully you will see that on my channel <laughs> hopefully it turns out okay this is another one of those this is going to be great as a pregnant woman but this is also going to be great after pregnancy just in the summer for years to come I love an oversized flowy dress that I can garden in and it'll be a nice thing that I can wear out uh, when I'm playing with my son <laughs> which is, just sounds nuts to me so I will um, include a link to the Instagram down below but just remember it's in it's in the IGTV videos so you have to go to that tab if you want to check it out um, oh, it's so beautiful and I think I have quite a few different fabrics that this dress would look amazing in so if it does turn out the way I'm hoping it will when I first make it then I will be making more speaking of patterns that don't really have a pattern um, something that I really want to make for the baby and this is another sewing pattern I think this is the first baby sewing pattern I have actually is um, a pair of like suspender baby bloomers so I'm gonna be hacking this because I can't find one that I like I got this really beautiful green like sage green and white striped fabric and I'm just planning to make a pair of baby bloomers with some button suspenders over top I think it's gonna look so cute but yes I'm just gonna be hacking a tutorial that I found on YouTube for baby bloomers and essentially adding the straps and the buttons it'll be easy I'm not worried about it um, 
but I am looking forward to making some baby clothes. So the next pattern is a bit of a rogue pattern choice. I don't think I've ever had anything else like this on my to make list but it is a pair of crochet summer shorts. I saw a lot of people make like knitted summer shorts or crochet summer shorts last year and I just love the way they look. They look so comfortable and if you pick the right yarn I'm sure they are like the softest thing on the planet. So I found this pattern <laughs> on Lovecrafts. Lovecrafts has a ton of great free patterns and I found this one and thought you know what I'm gonna go for that. I like those and I'm gonna go for those. Here's hoping they turn out okay and I get the sizing right. I don't even know how you go about making something like this but that is part of the fun for me at least is learning all the new skills so these are definitely on the list another fabulous crochet pattern that just speaks to my cottage core soul is this granny square i think it's called the elleth granny square floral blanket this is by christina michosk edomer I am so sorry for butchering that. I know I did. You cannot look at this pattern <laughs> and tell me it's not gorgeous. I have seen so many people make beautiful floral crochet blankets on Instagram and I've saved a bunch of them. I think this might be the first one I go for though. I just love the spring colors. It's gonna get me in the mood. I do wanna make it quite large, but that's absolutely fine. I also love how she gives examples of different color combinations you can make, but you can totally make this your own, especially if you want to make a big, beautiful, bright, colorful one like I do. I just want something that I can put out on my chair in the garden and it's just going to look, blend right in with all the florals, <laughs> all the flowers that we will hopefully get to growing this year. So this is up on my list for crochet blankets. If you saw my last video, you know I'm currently working on a crochet blanket and they're just great projects. They're really rhythmic and uh, they're really fun to work up. Oh, okay, so this project is completely different for me and I guess, I guess it would go under a sewing project. But they are the Felt Baby Shoes by S Pearl Soho. I can't, that's so hard for me to get out right now and I don't know why. Look at how cute. Now obviously, um, well maybe not obviously, you're not supposed to put shoes on a baby <laughs> right away. Um, and he won't be walking for a while I assume. Um, these though, they might be soft enough. So any shoes with like a hard so sole are really bad for a baby under, I think it's like six months, it might be eight months. Um, but these are nice and soft, so I, I'm gonna use them more as like a slipper over his socks to keep his feet warm. They're so cute, and they, certainly Pearl Soho makes it seem very easy to make them. So, it looks like a one day, you know, maybe a couple hours if I'm being really careful project. For me to focus on and I think I just oh they're so cute I want to make them in a ton of different colors <laughs> I know he's gonna grow so fast and he's gonna grow out of things so fast so um, I'm hopefully gonna make them a little bit bigger so that they fit a little bit longer but let's be honest all of this is for me it's not for him it's it's mainly for me because I just see small things right now and I get very very excited by the whole prospect Okay, only two more patterns left. They're both sewing patterns, although very different. Um, the next one is the Henley Romper. This comes in a variety of sizes from, it says from preemie to like five slash six toddler, which is amazing. I think most parents from the parents that I've talked to, because I'm not a parent yet, but most parents would agree that like rompers are the bomb. The other thing is that because I know a lot of parents talk about kind of the messiness of buttons when you've got kids, especially babies, rompers are really easy to insert snaps or a zipper or buttons if you want. Uh, this one has buttons but you could easily make it so that it has a zipper or some snaps in the back or on the side. 
just to make it a little bit easier for changing. I looked at a lot of romper patterns because there's quite a few out there and this was by far my favorite. It's simple, it's sleek, it's baggy so it'll be comfortable for him to run around in when he's older. By the looks of it they also have slightly different variations on it so I noticed that one style here has like folded cuffs on the bottom, another style has elastic cuffs. So there's different ways that you can individualize it to what you need or what the child likes, what, what's more comfortable for them. And I just love that. I think that kind of versatility is necessary for kids. <laughs> and then the last pattern, once again, I don't actually have a pattern for because I think I'm going to wing it. I've seen a couple different things that I like and I think I'm just going to mash them all together. <laughs> And that's a baby quilt. Um, I'm going to be making a baby quilt because I have to. I, I wouldn't be the lass in linen if I didn't. I have a couple baby quilts in the shop, but they are, I think I actually only have one left. And it's a whole cloth quilt. I love it. It's beautiful. Um, but I think for this one, I'm going to do more like a patchwork style so with squares, I might make some soft tooth stars, I'm, I might do borders, I'm not 100% sure, but I want it to be kind of random, and I want it to be made out of tons of different fabrics, because I'm really loving the look, where the fabrics have like similar color tones, but there are solids and plaids and prints, and they're all kind of mixed in, and I like that kind of scrappy quilt look, it's, it's very traditional, I mean it's why really people made quilts out of scraps of fabric and I really like traditional looking quilts. So I don't have a pattern. I think I'm gonna wing it. We'll have to see. I'll take inspiration photos and maybe I'll do like a little video on what I'm doing and how I'm making it and and uh, the process of that if you guys are interested. Um, but that is the last project that I have on my list for 2023. Like I said, this was ambitious. This is ambitious, but I think a lot of these are doable. I've tried to choose patterns that either are for smaller human beings uh, or accessories um, and that won't take too long. A couple of the things that I'm reticent on whether I'm actually going to get them done in time are any of the like full size blankets that seems very ambitious. Blankets take a lot of time. Uh, whether it's knitting, crochet, sewing, you know, a baby quilt, I'm obviously not going to make it like a full size because it's going to be for him to sleep with eventually, not right away obviously, um, or to use as like a play mat even, like just put it on the ground, he's a kid. So it's not going to be full size. I think that's doable, although it is a lot of work because it's quilting and it's going to be more patchwork. It's not going to be a whole cloth. Um, but yeah, the full size blankets could take a while. I would at least like to get them started this year, but I feel like everything else is doable. Even the projects that I have for myself are fairly simple. The patterns are like big rectangles of fabric that you sew together. If they don't, they shouldn't We'll see. They shouldn't take long. I am a slow maker because I am primarily a process maker. I love the process. I just love the process of making anything. <laughs> Knitting, crocheting, sewing, painting, whatever I'm doing. It's the process that keeps me going. I love, don't get me wrong, love a finished object. It's obviously a great feeling and it's very accomplished, but I, I make because the the act of making makes me happy. So I think I can do it. <laughs> we'll see. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out. If you're new here and you like this kind of content, maybe subscribe if, if it takes your fancy. We do cozy hobbies around here, basically. Also, just in case you guys are interested in supporting my channel and my work, I do have an Etsy shop where I sell handmade items and a couple antique items as well because I love to go antiquing. So I will leave a link below as well as all of my social media links, including Ravelry. My Ravelry profile is down there. Um, 
if you're interested in finding me elsewhere. And thank you so much for watching. I have really enjoyed our time together and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video.